Hey guys, welcome to an update on Exile, which is a multiplayer game that I am currently making. It's a survival multiplayer game in which you're going to be a mage and uh, do mage stuff. Okay, it's not completely defined, but um, it's part of the multiplayer project that we started a couple of weeks ago now, I guess. So um, I've already recorded this video prior because this week's progress is all about inventory and I wanted to talk about inventory, but it was a 40 minute video and, and when I started editing, it just didn't make any sense. I was rambling too much like I'm doing now. Um, so this time around, I have a plan and I'll be showing you things that uh, I'll just be talking about it. Like I can't show the whole code because things change on a very fundamental level. Um, and I'm going to go through a couple of these changes, but I can't show everything for, for the sole purpose that this project is now really big. <laughs> Um, it's something I'm actively working on pretty much every day now, and hopefully I can keep on doing that for quite a while. Um, unless work gets too busy, but hey. And to get started, we're going to start with a preview of what is the game. Um, I'm going to try and show only stuff that is as of right now, because of course, uh, unfortunately I have to re-record a video because I was not current enough. Though I do have, and I'm going to try and keep that up, but every every Sunday I do have a small video with no sound, like nothing fancy on my alt channel, which is actually my, my personal channel, in which I just post progress for myself. So it looked a little bit like that um, last Sunday, just inventory is there, and, and this update is something I'm going to keep on trying to do at least here because it's just for myself, right? And of course, a little bit more complex update through this channel. Server and client, let's start this up. So I have my client running here on the side. I'm gonna start with the client here, boom, boom. And um, this orb that you see in the middle here is actually an inventory. So if I open it up, this is inventory. I can move stuff around. Don't worry about the camera, I'll fix that very, very soon. I think in next week I'm gonna look into just blocking the camera. But as you can see here, I can move stuff around. If I can, if I can't merge them like this one, uh, then it just swap places. With my player, I'm gonna go and open up the same inventory. As you can see, the state is exactly the same. If I am to move stuff around, it works. And something that is very cool is that we have a concept as well for, if I open up my, my revision here, we have a, not my revision, my debug menu. As you can see here, we have revision 23. That's because we are on the 23rd iteration of this inventory. And if for some reason we were out of sync, for example, here I'll cheat and I'll go and I'll say, hey, I'm adding stuff to this inventory. Um, yeah, okay. And then you're gonna see that inventory here, the revision is on 48. Actually, it's 48, there we are. Crap, okay, so I don't have any problem. <laughs> um, but but basically the inventory, as you can see here, is, is out of sync. Um, and if I drag stuff around here, it resets it on this side. But now on top of that, this week, I also have the player inventory. And it was a bit hard to get these working together. And as you can see here, it's the same, it looks like the same inventory, but actually it's not because that's the player on the left inventory and that's the player on the right. They just happen to have the same item because my constructor is the same right now. Um, but they don't see each other's inventory uh, usually. And as you can see here, I can merge stuff into a certain slot as long as I don't hit the maximum amount of that item. For my rock, I believe it's 50 and for my branch, it's 10. So this one's already max stack. Here, I just swap um, and here I have two so I can merge them into that. And there you go. I can bring something from another inventory into the first one or back into that one. I can do half and half. For example, here, I'm going to take my 30 rocks, put them there. I have 15 back and I have now the max stack in the chest. So things like that work fine. And that's it for the preview. Let's jump into the video. Cheers. So what I wanted to talk about is um, initially, I've split the system in such a way that when I am on my client and server, sorry, I have a hair in my face. Um, I actually split in a couple of things here. Um, I call it utilities and system. So when I start my server, I boot up my utilities and those are static class in which we have um, data that is gonna be there pretty much forever. Um, and now in the previous recording, I didn't have the actor utility and I didn't have the building utility because that's that's part of what I'm working on this week. It's just that uh, I'm re-recording a little bit later on and I don't wanna go back to a previous branch. Um, but just to show this basically, if I take an example, for the inventory, I needed to have 
um, a list of items that exist within the game. And inside of that list, I can go check. It's just a static class that has a static array of item data. And item, item data is a, um, it's a class that actually derives from a scriptable object in which you simply have these. So what is the item ID? What's the name of that item? What is the, the tool tip? So we could sell also the flavor text. And how many of this item can I have in a single inventory stack? And also a thumbnail. So these, I create them manually within the game, uh, actually within the engine. So if I go somewhere here, I look for an item. I remember I have a rock item. And here it is. So it's inside of a resource folder called item data. And on ID number one, I have a rock. On ID number five, I have a branch. So those are very simple stuff, right? Uh, scriptable objects are there just for that purpose. And when I start the game, I make sure to load all of these. So everything that is inside the, um, the resource folder, I load all of them and I put them inside of an array. This array is actually, it's not a dictionary. It could have been a dictionary though, but I, I wanted to make sure that um, if at one point I decide to remove an item from the game, um, the array still works. So right here we have one, ID one that is a rock and ID five that is a branch, which doesn't give us a, a length of two. So the array is not only of two, it's actually of five and then actually of six. And at item um, ID zero, there's nothing. Item ID two, there's nothing. But the, the array exists and has a size of six is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so that's it for the utilities. And and that's true for all the new system I'm, I'm coming up with. For example, I have the building utility, which is exactly the same thing. Um, it loads all the building information. So the name of the building, the thumbnail of that when I want to build them. And also just recently, um, as of yesterday, I also have something called actor utility. So we've been, um, we've been talking about actor last week because actor are those objects that are in my, in my multiplayer space. So if I just run around and, um, I see a tree and I can cut that tree and people can see me cut that tree. It's a, it's a net object, right? It's a game object that belongs in the network because you need to have an update. However, if um, there is the, if there is a castle that is always there and it's just like, it's just a, a visual object that is always there in the map exact, exactly at the same spot, I don't need to put it under the net because there's nothing like, it, it's not moving around, it's not changing, it's not doing anything. It's just like a static object that is there for maybe climbing on it or, or stuff like that, right? So that does not need to be a net object. But for everything that is a net object, I now have an actor utility in which um, I load all these objects through, actually not, not these objects, I don't want to say object. I call them archetype because, you know, at one point I'm going to have to start creating those actors and I say, I, this is a new NPC, it's going to have a, a certain name and it's going to have a certain interaction position in the, in the space. Um, I need to define all of that somewhere, right? So I decided for the moment I put that under a CSV file. Now I'm showing you stuff that I'm doing this week, so that doesn't make any sense. But I'll, I'll just show you real quick, right? So for my buildings, um, since, since I'm here, for my buildings, buildings with an S, I believe, I have a text file and that just like, that gives me what I can build. So I have a building called remove building, which is this one is a special one. Then I have a, a manuel and inventory cube. Um, and I just load them up through a CSV file like that. So later on, I'm going to create some sort of editor in which I can create new objects, assign them a specific mesh ID and material ID. That's how they change in their looks. Uh, collider ID, that's how they change in their collider, of course. And, and the rest is just the interaction flag and also, um, well, the update flag and the interaction flag. Okay. So I think I spoke a little bit too much. I went on the tangent again. I, I always do that. I'm sorry. Okay. Next up, we have the inventory manager. That's really what we're looking to get into today. The inventory manager, um, it's a system, right? So what I do with the system is uh, when I have like a big part of my game, I need to uh, encapsulate. I put it under those systems. And what really happens here is I have three files. I have a inventory manager client. I have inventory manager on its own. And I also have inventory manager server. So these are all things that will have to do with inventory, of course. Um, the action that will be shared in between the two, the server and the client, are all beneath the parent class, so inventory manager here. I'm looking at things such as adding an item to a slot, 
um, updating an item to a slot and and um, those item I'll get into that after okay <laughs> updating an item remove an item stuff like that multiple overloads here in case I need it um, utility functions such as count how many free slots I have count um, how many of a certain item I am so later later on when I want to build something for example and I need five branch then I'll be able to call this and say hey this is the inventory I'm looking for so that's basically the actor ID of the person that's the item I'm looking for a branch so basically here uh, this is player zero and this is item ID five for branch how many of that do I have do I have minimum five then sure okay then I can build something uh, count of, you know those are all other things like that right and also get existing stack that was really helpful for um, merging stacks into one another so these are all part of the base class both the server and the client they have this and it's very important they have this because <clears throat> why not okay <laughs> very good explanation congratulations michael um now let's open up one of the two i'm going to start with the server i always find that the server side is much easier than doing the client side inventory manager server okay um, but initially, I, I don't know if you guys remember here, I had a dictionary that is the inventory itself with int and inventory state. So I believe that is the slot of the, no, actually, never mind. So these are the player inventories. Int is the actor ID. So what is your unique ID as a player? So when you enter the world, you're given a unique ID. And then the inventory state is just a object that defines your whole inventory. We'll get into that in a second. Actually, we'll get into that now. Okay, good. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense to get into that now. <laughs> I want to try and be coherent here. Uh, probably doesn't work at all. So inventory state is... Um, if one person has inventory, inventory state is going to be able to get the whole thing, right? It's just going to be... You're going to be able to serialize that state and replicate it somewhere with the same thing. And you can see it like that with the following fields. I have inventory ID, which technically maybe I would not need. Uh, inventory space very useful because for example my player have a default space of I believe like 30 and when you build the chest it has a default space of 10 or something like that so the chest has less inventory space um, it has the list of items and also has a revision number revision number is actually used to make sure we don't we don't have um, desynchronized inventory again I'll get into that in a bit Okay, and I just create these, right, assign things. So, for example, if you create a new, um, boop, 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 boom. Oh, at the moment, just for testing purpose, when I create a new inventory, um, I give it an inventory space of 30. That's for the player. And then I just assign some random items here. Well, they're not they're not random because I put them manually there. This was helpful for me when um, when I wanted to move things around and test out my, my scripts, right, and my inventory scripts. Uh, that's good. Here it's another uh, constructor in which I define the space. So that's when I create a chest, for example. And that's the deserializer. So when I get it from um, the server, I want to send in the data stream reader so I can recreate it through the deserialize, just like we did for the actor, basically. Um, okay, and here, when I, when I actually serialize this thing, I start with the, the field we have at the top. So what is my inventory ID? What is my target ID, you could say? What's the current revision I'm on? So if it's the third time that this inventory changed, this number is going to be three. And how much inventory space I have, of course. And then I go through every single one of the objects. And if the item at, at a certain spot is null, I just write a short that is zero. And if not, I serialize the whole item. So here the... Um, <laughs> The size of a message will change quite a lot depending on what you have in your inventory. If you're a player that has a full inventory of nothing, of void, so you're going to have here uh, first your code, right? Because you always have the operation code. And then the ID that your player has, the revision you're on right now. Here is going to be 30 because that's the revisions, uh, the inventory space. And then you're going to have 30 zeros after that. But however, if your inventory is full, then you're going to have... 30 times one, two, three, four new fields in there, depending if there's an item or not. And that's what I wanted to get into real quick. Um, my definition for an item here is 
is not really connected to the item data we had. If we have a look at item, this is what it is actually. It's an item ID, right? So with the item ID, I could reach the item data. Uh, so here I don't have a name. I don't have the maximum amount of fields. I don't have the amount of uh, the tooltip, all of that. All I have is an ID. How many of that item I have right now? So you see here the item class actually contains the amount that you have. So one item could be equal to 25 rocks, for example. And also gave myself two, um, two bytes here. I'm not quite sure why I did that. Uh, just in case at one point my item could be in a certain state, I decided to leave them in there. It's quite stupid to do it now. Maybe I should do it later when I actually need them. But at the moment, you know, I just left them in there. Um, yeah, if I have some size problem with, with the, the size of the messages that are being sent, then maybe I need to look into that. Okay, and that pretty much does it for what I wanted to show you in terms of the inventory state. Um, now, I don't know if I want to get into this one. This one is quite big. Okay, I'll go through it fairly quickly. Uh, but before I go into this, I need to show you the new messages that we've made because every time that we create a new net function, I tend to create messages as well. So I'm going to go under the net messages folder and the new the new net messages we have for inventory are one inventory update and also synchronize inventory. I'll open them both. They're very different and they need to they need to work together actually. So the first one that is easy to see here is is inventory update. So just like we had the synchronize actor um, on the previous video here, we have the inventory update. So as soon as one of the object somewhere in a certain target inventory, that could be my inventory, a chest inventory, another player inventory, uh, when that happens, then um, we create a new message with the revision of that inventory. So, hey, I mean, if something moved from one spot to another, then we take the current revision, we do plus plus on it, and that becomes the new state of that inventory that we need to send over. And we send, after that, we send three lists, right? What has been added? So we had an empty slot, now it contains something. Or what has been updated? We had five rock in a single slot, now it's 10 rocks. And also what is removed? We took those 10 rocks and we moved them to another space, which means now we have a two add and also a two remove at where we were. Then we have the constructor and we serialize this. The way I serialize is like this. So first, always write the code. And then, yeah, okay, so you always write the code, you write the target inventory where we're going, the revision, of course. And then what I do is I had, how many do we have in the two add lists? If it's zero, then we don't do anything here. But if it's one or multiple, then we start serializing the whole thing. So we serialize the whole value. Here, the value is an item and it's type of item. And we have under the item, as we saw earlier, we have a serialized class. So um, it's very important that we do the, exam the exact same thing when we deserialize. So what happened here is that we read the target, we read the in for revision, but then after that, we create a to add um, dictionary. And to get the length of that to add, what we do is we do a read byte, which gives us this line, the equivalent of this line here. And then we go through the add count. Um, same thing when we get to that point, we're at the update count read byte, which means we are at this line. So that's how we actually serialize lists. That actually, that's how we, <laughs> that's how I serialize lists. Maybe there's a better way. I actually found this to be quite useful and I did not have any corruption, any corrupt data thus far. So I've been really lucky not to mess up any of my messages because it's a pain to debug. We all know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Looking good. The next message is the synchronized inventory. Um, this one just in case, I'm out of sync with like, for example, we're on the wrong um, revision level. Um, the update I got was for revision six and my inventory is on revision seven for some reason. Maybe they missed a message where I updated something or maybe we did some, some action at the same time. Um, then what happens is if the server detects that we're not on the same revision, then we're going to need to do something about it. And the way I fix that is by sending the whole inventory. Um, there is not only that moment, so if there's a, a revision desync, then yes, we send a sync inventory, but when we first join the game and we see new inventories popping up, I also send synchronized inventory because this is the equivalent of sending the whole thing, basically. 
Okay, um, the way I do it is I, it's a very simple class here, but what I do is I serialize the full inventory state. Of course, state has a serialized class, and that's what we saw earlier here. And that's it. <laughs> it's actually the easiest message, but it's quite, uh, it's quite effective. Let's see, what else did we need to talk about on this case here? I just need to open Sublime. We could do a quick look at the um, the inventory manager server and also the inventory manager client. So that's the server. And that is the client. I'm not 100% done. There's uh, still a couple of things to be done here. I have a to-do list. Um, I don't even support when I add too much item right now. Things like that I still need to tackle, but I think I have a very good base and I can keep actually building on top of that. I had to rewrite the system a couple of times because initially I, I made mistakes, stupid mistakes, such as um, I did not take into account that uh, there was going to be more than one inventory of the screen on the screen at the same time. So, for example, when I want to put something inside of a chest or I want to retrieve something out of the chest or maybe like player two player want to trade together, I did not really take that in consideration. So, um, you'll see here, I have a couple of function that looks like this. Drag to another slot, move to a empty slot or move to occupied slot. Those are all things that you would assume that I, not you would, but I assume were on a lower level. So um, I have a script that takes care of only client side stuff, right? It's called inventory display. And there I can like move inventory like from slot, slot one to slot two, for example, uh, within my own inventory. But this script only contains information about my inventory and not the other person's inventory or the chest inventory. So I had to bring all of these four function. I have to bring up one level higher at the place that um, on my inventory manager client at the place where this script was aware of every other inventories around because this script, of course, inherit from inventory manager, which this one has all the inventories in it of all the actor that we're currently subscribed to. Um, so yeah, so initially I messed up there. Um, thanks to Discord, I had a little, a little bit of help and that was good. Uh, but, 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 but what do I want to say? Yeah, so when you do tackle this system, if you ever want to do tackle this system, just make sure that you prepare for this kind of stuff right uh, but that that's pretty is that it no i have a create inventory function um update inventory function as well delete inventory what was the biggest part actually of this uh well the hardest part of this was to hook up these two scripts here which are the inventory display and the player inventory display those are two different things actually this one could be another type it could be the other inventory display um, those are like a type that manipulates all of my client side stuff. It's, it's a script I was talking about a couple of seconds ago. So if we just jump into it, uh, I have a couple of things here, but really the, the real script here is under inventory display. Uh, they just inherit and they override a couple of things. This is what really was annoying. So I had to do first, I'm resizing the inventory based on how many slots we have. So I have all of these constant over here. I have an action that is on release item. So when this script uh, figures out that we're, we're dragging an item and then we're dropping that item somewhere, we don't know where, I have an action that is being called because then my inventory manager client, so the, the uh, this one, it just, this one, the script, listen to drop. Why does it listen to drop? Because the inventory display, this one here, is only for a single inventory. So this is all that I can, I, all that encapsulate like for example only the player inventory and when my player inventory uh, we drag something from from that inventory to another one to a chest for example then we get to a point where uh, you know we, we go outside and the way that we communicate outside is through an action in this case so I do on release item and then my clan can pick it up so somewhere here we have the on release item there it is and then it looks at Hey, which one is offered in, in the inventories? And then we can call functions such as uh, 
drag to another slot. <laughs> so this whole function here is only there to drag to another slot in a different inventory. So I also log myself something cross inventory drag from blah, blah, blah to another one. Um, so that, that, that is the thing that was complicated. Also getting all the action to work together was a little bit complicated because I forgot one thing <laughs> that is very, very simple. Um, I have to wait until the world is loaded. I have to wait until the scene is loaded. So here, initially, like, I always were in sync. Like, I was always in synchronization, like, register event and unregister event, uh, where this is being called in the initialize and this is being called when we shut down. Uh, those were in sync, so I could just, like, copy this, paste that here. But as you can see here, we have a couple more function um, on the unregister, and that's because I have to subscribe to certain event at a later time uh, for the sole purpose that some of these events, they require, um, and I'll show you right now, they require the, the UI to be loaded completely. They require the scene to be loaded completely. So what I do is when my world is loaded, which is another action that I've put in my, um, I believe it's my in, in my enter world, I believe, um, exile client. Let me double check. But yeah, just, just getting the, um, the timing of the scripts to run properly was a bit of a pain but here as you can see so when we create our client we register to enter world okay we go down here on enter world wait for the scene to load then we add this function on scene loaded when the scene is loaded then i call world scene loaded invoke and then a lot of systems are actually subscribed to that now uh, my new system for building is subscribed to that my my actor system i believe is not but for example this one the inventory is and at that point, and only at that point, I can first find my references for um, these items that are the script that are on top of my, my game objects. And then I can do the unrelease item plus equal. And to pretty much wrap up this video, I'll do a quick demo here in which I'll boot this new version. Um, <laughs> I wish I recorded the proper thing on Monday like I thought I did, but... Uh, because now you're going to see things that are updated and it's not really, um, it's not exactly the same thing, but let's see. So I'm booting a client server. Boom, boom. Let's see. Okay. My other player is right here. This is this orb here is actually a inventory. So when I click on it first, uh, since at the moment I don't have, a, I don't have something that, um, when this chest or this actor is created, it doesn't send me the inventory right away. So what happened is that I get the inventory not found. And then after that, I, I ask my server for the inventory. So basically I do, I do a request in which, what is this inventory? What happened is that uh, I end up receiving the message, um, net sync inventory. And then on the second time, well, you'll see it here. I have the inventory, um, but this is not my inventory. This is the chest inventory or this orbs inventory, and I can move stuff around like so it swaps like that if it's not the right type and then if i open my own inventory as you can see i can do the exact same thing but i can also merge things because the rock max stack is uh, 30 and here the branch max stack is 10 so if i try to drag this it doesn't work if i put that here it does work because it's the right number and then cross inventory drag also works and then see things like that. So we had three here, it had eight, that kind of operation also works. So those are all little things that actually took quite a lot of time to make work. Um, and I want to show that with the other, so that's my other guy walking around. Let's open the same inventory. So the one on this orb, as you can see, it's in sync and I'm going to drop my branches in there and it gets the messages and I can actually take that, put it back in my own inventory. And it's all gone now so this works very very fine at the moment it's quite good um do i have anything else i want to show that is part of the inventory and not the construction not at the moment i don't think so uh we added a couple of things as well last week where uh we just we have this highlight but you also saw a video on that on the channel so there was a video on that on on how to do it uh we're doing it through the scriptable rendering pipeline and we're changing the layer of that object so it shows what we can interact with 
Um, for example, this is the other player. I can't interact with him, but next to it, there's an actor that has the dialogue flag on. Though there is no dialogue, but <laughs> it's something like that. And for example, if I pop up something right now, um, what I just popped is a, another actor. How do I remove the, the build mode? There it is. It's another actor, and um, this actor has the same thing, right? But I, I just can't interact with it. doesn't have a flag I can interact with. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show. Let me check if I have anything else I want to say. No, not for this week. Uh, hopefully by next week, I'm going to be a little bit faster posting this update video, but um, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I'm rambling quite a lot. Um, I almost did it in one take, actually. I was quite proud. But uh, I just want to keep you up to date with that game. I like making multiplayer stuff. It actually feels good. And I have very good vision on what the game could be. And I really hope I can get it to that point. Uh, obviously, the art is never going to follow as fast. But maybe at one point when things start getting a little bit better. Um, and maybe we can get it rolling. with the, the, the channel can get rolling a little bit. I can put some revenue that I make on the channel on getting an actual art. Because that'd be good. But uh, until then, I'm just going to keep on making this. Because it's quite a lot of work. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And please drop a like, share this, uh, share this, or just share the channel around. That'd be good. And I will see you very soon with a. What am I making next week? Oh, I'm starting a chess, a chess tutorial, multiplayer chess tutorial. So, be on the lookout for that. <laughs> All right, cheers, guys. Peace.